right. <clears throat> Loading. Welcome, everybody. If you are just joining us, we are about to get started. How to teach English using authentic global connections. We'll just wait about one or two minutes for people to join. Um, there is a chat window here if you have questions or you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, our webinar, How to Teach English Using Authentic Global Connections. My name is Jessica. I'm the community manager at Pen Pal Schools. We're so excited to host this webinar and provide you with some insights from global educators around the world. We have some great speakers today, um, including Lucine, an English teacher from Russia, um, hopefully soon we'll have Faith joining us. She's an English teacher from the USA, um, and I have some great work from her class to share in case she can't make it. Um, and then we also have Mark, who is an ESL expert and our chief learning officer at Pen Pal Schools. So a lot of experts both in the classroom and out of the classroom to share how authentic global connections can impact your English language learners and all of your students. So I'm gonna jump on. Hi everybody, my name is Jessica. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, before we get started, I just wanna ask you to uh, please introduce yourself in our chat here. Let us know where you're coming from. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to ask them there and we'll answer them at the end. Um, also, you can follow along today on Twitter. Um, we will be sharing some really great questions on Twitter. We want you to engage with us and participate as well. So make sure you are following Pen Pal Schools. Let me get this slide up for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Make sure you're following Pen Pal Schools uh, and hashtag English Connections in your responses. We are so lucky to be joined today by uh, educators from the USA and from Russia. Just a few of our global ambassadors from our community of learners. Um, so this is our Pen Pal Schools global learning community. A lot, of, a lot of classrooms and teachers and students all around the world are connecting and practicing English together. Um, and they're doing this through collaborative topics. So students are discussing food and robotics and poetry um, and all sorts of really fascinating topics. They're discussing that with pen pals uh, who are native English speakers, who are fluent English speakers, who are English language learners. Um, one of those speakers will be joining us tonight, one of those educators uh, will be joining us tonight, Lucine. And then we have some examples from another educator, Faith. Um, we're gonna tell you a little bit more about pen pal schools at the very end. But just wanna share, if you're attending this webinar today, we are offering you a special discount um, you want to use this link to claim that, penpalschools.com slash English. We'll also share this in the chat so you can have a link to it there, and we'll revisit this again at the end. So if you have questions about this, feel free to share your questions in the chat. But let's dive right into our conversation here. We only have a few questions tonight because we really want to share a lot of student examples with you. Um, so we're going to start with question one. Like I said, if you want to answer this too, you can follow along on Twitter and use the hashtag English Connections. What impact have global connections had on your instruction and on your students' English language skills? 
So we're going to start this question uh, with Lucine. She'll be on camera in a minute. Um, she's from Russia. We were just learning about where exactly in Russia she's from, and now we can see it on a map. Um, most people are probably familiar with the region of Serbia, uh, but she's in one of the largest cities in Russia. And I'll let her tell you how to pronounce it. Um, but I'm going to jump off camera, let Lucine introduce herself, uh, and then Lucine, I'll put your slides back on so that uh, people can see that while you're speaking. Oh, sorry about that, Lucine, I got you paused. All right. Hi, Lucine. Uh, hi, Jessica. Hi, Mark. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, let me express my gratitude for inviting me to this uh, wonderful educational event. I'm very excited and very happy to see you, to, to hear you all. And can you, tell me how, can you tell us how you pronounce the name of your town again? Um, Lucine, but you can call me just Lucine. I think it's easier. <laughs> so, uh, as you previously said, Jessica, I teach English in Russia in the Krasnoyarsk region, and I teach English. I am a certified global educator, and um, I am I am engaged in a lot of uh, different. Uh, uh, Global projects. Mm -hmm. Can you show me? Can you show me the next slide, please? Yep. So we see a lot of your projects here. Uh, yeah. International pen pal yeah. schools. Yes, these are some of the things I am engaged in with my students. And I'm very honored to present Pample Schools, um, Pample School uh, Global Projects at different local, regional, and international educational events, conferences, seminars. Mm -hmm. And also very happy to be engaged in uh, KidLink and National Geographic mm -hmm. and Microsoft Educator Communities and uh, also coordinate my own global schools around the world video exchange pro project. So why I'm doing all this and what impact have global connections um, had on my teaching and on my students? As we know, um, in modern society, there are changes that have an impact on the field of education. Schools are called upon to prepare their students for development in the context of global, globalization and digital technologies. And the modern teacher strives to use innovative methods and approaches so that students gain specific skills and competencies and can develop in the changing society. And talking about uh, the 21st century skills, we should not forget about global competence among other companies competencies. Um, mm -hmm. Pample schools and global educations. Now the previous uh, slide, please. So Pample schools and uh, global education help me motivate my students to learn English. You know, for native speakers, it, it is a real for non-native speakers, it is a real challenge, and sometimes my students faced difficulties that um, I used to distract them, and uh, you know, they felt some kind of uh, disappointment. So I realized I had to connect my students to global communities so that they use their, um, so that they use English in their everyday life, and they didn't realize the importance of learning English until they got engaged in international projects. Uh, so, uh, Pample schools uh, help us to build global friendship and to broaden the circle of our global friends. It, um, the projects help us learn cultures, religions, countries, uh, which in their turn help to develop tolerance and understanding because I, I believe that you can't love, you can't respect something um, 
unless you uh, you know it, you learn it. Uh, my students gain new knowledge and share their own knowledge across the continents. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Penpal School's global projects provide an authentic environment which um, help to overcome the language barrier. And the wide range of school subjects involved in the research uh, help to develop curiosity and to learn new things about the world. To talk about the skills, uh, we should uh, highlight you know, reading, writing, listening and speaking skills, of course. Also collaboration with peers and teachers and the responsibility for their cooperative work. They also improve uh, uh, other skills like uh, problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, global awareness, etc. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. This is the teacher's dashboard. It is really very convenient. The teacher has an opportunity to coordinate all the projects from the beginning to the end to see all the work students are doing uh, during the project. Um, Pantel School is a very convenient way of learning because you can give some tasks uh, as homework. Of course, uh, some part of the project is done is the in the classroom and the other uh, part is even as um, homework. Moreover, parents can be involved in the studying process, uh, helping their children with homework and giving them new ideas and sharing their knowledge with their kids. I like the grading system and I'm very thankful to Pankel Schools for including in the uh, grading system um, such um, criteria as uh, empathy and collaboration. I think that collaboration is the key concept to determine the success of any undertaking. Um, you might can you show me the jump in for a second here before we move on to the next slide? Um, just yeah. to point out here, this is uh, one of uh, Lucina's students. Uh, in their response, and then they had a, a reaction to this, a comment from a pen pal in Texas. So here we have a student in Russia writing and getting feedback from a student in Texas. Um, and then like Lucina said, teachers are able to provide feedback that's not just about language and not just about reading and writing, um, but empathy and collaboration. And so that's one of the benefits of connecting students globally is they're able to learn a lot more skills than just practicing, practicing language. Um, I think it's helpful to help kids understand why language is important. Um, it connects us, it helps us understand each other. And so I really like, uh, Lucina, that you pointed out how you can give feedback about all of those other skills like empathy and collaboration too. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know maybe that in Russia, teachers can teach in different levels. For example, I teach uh, in elementary and middle and high levels. And in this slide, you can see my middle school learners and my high school learners. And they're really very interested and very excited uh, about participating in the uh, um, Pineville Schools Global Project. And among the advantages of Penpal schools, I would like to highlight also the fact that uh, Penpal schools uh, gives an opportunity at, uh, to those students who, who can't uh, demonstrate their abilities uh, due to lack of self-confidence. Yes, they are shy, they are not uh, very self-confident and they can't demonstrate their abilities. But thanks to this uh, digital, um, environment, digital, um, let me remember the word, uh, digital space maybe, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they have an opportunity to um, achieve some results. And uh, a very good example of what I said is that last year two of my students became the students of the week and um, 
they are actually were the best students uh, in the classroom and they uh, they didn't they didn't even they they weren't even um, um, very good at english you see but thanks to their creativity and hard work they achieved good good results and another uh, another uh, uh, example um, is um, that my um, middle school uh, learner, now you see in the slide, this is Elena, and um, she had a very, very big difficulty in her life, a challenge in, the, in, in her life, and uh, thanks to, to the engagement in the Panpol schools, and thanks to her responsibility, she could overcome the difficulties and uh, return to her everyday life. She was very depressed, and thanks to the project, she could really she she could uh, come back to her everyday life. That's so yeah. here, and I'm I'm so glad you're sharing that. We were really really proud of the work she did in this uh, in this topic too. Um, and I just want to echo that I, I hear this a lot from teachers that they'll be surprised sometimes by the students who are featured as pen pal stars because. They're not necessarily the, um, you know, the best students in the class or the best writers or the best at English. Um, but it's always great to get to reward those students and, and, and encourage them because Pendal Schools and, and any sort of global connection is really a place to learn and a place to practice. Um, and we don't like to only reward the best students, but the students who we see working really hard. Um, and so you can see here just in a little bit of this post highlighting Elena's work that she got to read a lot of different fables, folk tales, and myths, and then discuss them with her pen pals and write her own. So she's getting a lot of reading and writing practice in English, um, you know, and then, as you mentioned, really helping her get to a better place in her life. Um, that's, that's kind of the point of education and learning. So thank you for sharing that story. Thank you, too. And in the next slide, you can see my young learners um, they are really very very motivated and very excited about participating in pample schools and in the picture you can see how they explore mexico and our uh, partner school from mexico and i hope next school year i can engage them in uh, more projects Um, let's see what is the next. Mm -hmm. And um, sharing the ways of uh, helping students be globally connected, I would like to highlight also correspondence. Um, it is uh, both about uh, emailing and uh, regular mail and you know regular mail is making my students really very happy you can see that uh, in the pictures um, we have uh, got a lot of letters from different countries and sent our own letters and postcards and different posters and souvenirs and so on and this is really very effective and very motivating way of uh, being globally connected Next, please. Um, this is one more example of uh, global correspondence. Uh, this is about a uh, big uh, DAF for peace project. And you see uh, the big DAF created by uh, 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 Sri Lankan uh, students. And this DAF was traveling um, around the world and each school was uh, writing um, their um, peace message on the back side of the dove and uh, then we sent it uh, to the to the next country um, and the big dove had, uh, has made a pretty big journey yes next please yes uh, Skype uh, is a Microsoft tool that is a very effective way of global communication. Um, you know, you can gain knowledge not just from books, but from the real communication. And it is really very, very motiva motivating uh, for my students. They can also um, develop their speaking skills, among all other 
uh, competencies, other skills. Mm -hmm. You can see here our guest speaker from the Philippines and Thailand and uh, Turkey. And in the next slide, we can see um, my friend and colleague from the Kingdom of Bahrain. From the next is from Bangladesh. Let's see what is the next. Oh, okay. So, just a few words about uh, Skype. Uh, um, we sometimes have uh, challenges uh, related to time zones. So, if we can't uh, connect to the classroom, we can, if you can't collect, connect to students, we usually have a guest speaker in our classroom, and it is also really very a uh, good way to of communication. My students have an opportunity to uh, ask and answer. A lot of questions and um, develop their English language skills. And at last, um, uh, sharing the expertise, of course, I find it very, very important. And I very often share my expertise at different local, regional, and international events so that I can help and demonstrate other teachers how important and how effective is the, uh, the global collaboration and to show them the ways uh, how they can connect to other educators around the world because some teachers really uh, are eager to connect but they, they can't find ways, they don't know the way so I find it very important. So yeah. Um, yeah, that actually is a perfect segue into um, what, what Faith was going to share and what I'll share on her behalf. Um, but first of all, thank you so much for uh, sharing so many great resources. I hope you are taking notes uh, if you're out there watching. Um, Lucine was, let me come back on camera here. Um, we heard about resources for digital connections like pen pal schools, um, resources for sending mail back and forth and having a different kind of exchange, which takes a lot more time because you're waiting for mail to come um, in the mail. And then um, exchanges that are happening face-to-face -face over video through Skype. So there's a lot of ways to connect your students globally, whether you want to uh, have a one quick way to connect with a lot of different countries, like on pen pal schools within one class period, you connect. You can connect with 20 or 30 different countries or have a one-to-one -one connection in a Skype call or a snail mail call. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. So if you're not bringing global connections to your learners, um, you should start. There's a lot of tools ready for you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you, Mark and Jessica for support. Thank you. All right, I'm going to share my screen one more time um, before we, we go to Mark to fill anything else in. Um, so Faith is, Faith is an educator from the United States. I will still show you where she's from as soon as my mouse starts working again. There we go. Um, so Faith is from Virginia in the United States. She's an English teacher, and she's also a Penn Health Schools Global Ambassador. She travels all around the world, actually. Here she is. She travels all around the world and works with educators in different countries um, and supports their instruction. So just like Lucino was saying, part of the value of connecting your students globally is being able to connect with educators globally, to share resources, to start projects together, um, and to really support each other uh, to share resources that support your students. Um, some parts of the world have really great professional development where teachers are getting support and they're getting active hands-on learning opportunities. Um, and in other parts of the world, that may not be happening. But because teachers connect globally, they're able to exchange ideas and really help improve education. Uh, so one project that Faith has done in addition to Pen Pal Schools is she uh, she's met so many teachers through pen pal schools and through her travels and connecting with educa educators through traveling that uh, they started a global book talk and they created a blog a website um, where they had all of their students respond to posts so here is one from a few years ago is learning a second language in middle or high school really necessary um, and so this this is a uh, one example of how your students can connect is just pose a simple question and invite your teacher friends around the world to have their students answer it. 
Um, we make this really easy for you to do on pen pal schools. But if you know people who are teaching in other schools or in other places, this is this is one step you can take to start connecting your class. Um, if you want to connect with Faith more, I encourage you to join the Pen Pal Schools community. Um, your students will be able to learn from her students. Uh, but let's move on to our next speaker. Uh, we have Mark Danforth. He's an ESL expert from the USA. He supported students in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Um, so I'll bring you back on camera, Mark, here. And is there anything else you want to add about the impact that global connections can have on learners? Uh, of course, yeah. And thank you, Jessica, um, for facilitating. And Lucine, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know that in your region of Russia, you're exactly 12 hours ahead of us here in Austin, Texas. Um, so it's pretty amazing that we're able to cover coast to coast uh, with this conversation. So um, I want to just echo and, and, and acknowledge some of the points that you made. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, early in uh, our conversation that um, you're preparing students for a global collaboration and, and modern technologies. And I think that one of the real benefits of global connections for English language learning is that it answers the question why. Um, it helps students understand why they are learning these skills. Um, you know, English is still a language that has value in economics, in uh, politics, in education. Um, and so by connecting your students with peers around the world, you know, they, they, they're having the chance to um, apply English in really interesting contexts that are relevant. Um, you know, I can tell you that over the last number of decades, um, schools in the United States and around the world, uh, English language instruction takes the shape of learning vocabulary, learning grammar, um, practicing um, some very technical skills, which, which are helpful in, in, in helping students understand some of the um, elementary uh, parts of English, but students really need to apply those skills and they're really going to learn and retain a lot of the knowledge, a lot of the vocabulary, a lot of the grammar um, by applying English in an authentic context. So um, I love, Lucine, how you mentioned that it's preparing students, it's providing them with the relevant context, um, supporting them in, in, in their preparation to be really positive contributors in the 21st century, both professionally, uh, personally, academically. Um, I also want to say that, you know, we hear this time and time again, that uh, it helps boost students' competence or confidence um, to work through uh, global connections. So, you know, I loved the example you gave of uh, a student who maybe wasn't the best English speaker in your classroom, who um, had the chance to connect with peers globally to practice English, and the student really did an amazing job. Um, you think about students are, it's, it's a lot of pressure and they can, students can feel very nervous um, if they're in a classroom with their friends and they're asked to speak out loud, they're asked to share an idea in uh, uh, the language that they're learning. But um, if you're having a global connection through technology, through a program like Skype or through pen pal schools, you may or may not ever meet the person that you're talking to. Um, and so it can give you confidence. It can help you feel safe to take risks, to express yourself, right? Um, and, and, and really uh, see the benefits of why you're learning English. So um, I loved that point that you made as well. Um, and I just wanna emphasize that, you know, it's, it's, it's very important to teach vocabulary, um, to help students understand the, the grammatical conventions, you know, whether you're learning English from Spanish, from Mandarin Chinese, from Russian, you know, learning languages is hard. Um, and so when you're able to do so with technology, it's very motivating because kids are, are using technology every day in their lives. And so um, it's an accessible way for students to engage with English language learning. Um, you know, it's, it's emotionally exciting. They're, they're talking about conversations with people just like them, with people oftentimes their same age. So they have this emotional engagement. Um, and then students, they're being challenged, um, you know, in the context of pen pal schools. And I, I love that uh, it looks like, Lucina, you, you and your students have participated in our uh, fables, folk tales, and mythologies topic, where not only are students learning English, but they're being challenged to think about English and apply English in a specific academic context, that of short stories and that of mythology and, and thinking about culture through the stories that we tell. And so, you know, challenging students to use that English for engaging ways um, is also a really great way to not only help engage students in English language instruction, but also to help them retain and remember 
um, the different uh, words, the different vocabulary, the different grammatical um, constructions that they're practicing in English as well. So, you know, I, just to reiterate, I, I love that, uh, you know, the global connections really help answer the why are we learning English. Um, it really helps students stay engaged um, in the English language learning process, and it helps students retain and remember um, the vocabulary, the grammar, um, and the English language skills that they're developing. So, Lucine, I thought you did a, a really great job of summarizing um, how global connections can really impact English language skills. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And as as it was mentioned earlier, um, because technology allows you to connect your students so easily, this kind of practice doesn't just have to happen at school in your classroom. This kind of practice can also happen at home um, and on the weekends and outside of school. So it really empowers students to take ownership of their learning and know that they can learn and practice language anywhere, anytime. Um, that's great. And I think that's a great point also, Jessica. I think that um, you know when we teach a subject only in the context of a school classroom, students might expect that that's the only place where this skill can be applied or the only place that this knowledge can be used. And so, you know, if you're a non-native English speaker, if you have limited academic English proficiency, you know, you're in an English classroom and you're practicing these skills, if you're not invited to converse in English outside of school, then you're, you're not gonna potentially um, grow as an English language speaker. You're not gonna make connections and think about where these different skills and this knowledge can be applied. You're gonna compartmentalize that into school. So I love that uh, you're making the point that global connections can occur during the school day and certainly are encouraged to occur outside of school as well. And technology definitely makes that possible. Thank you. All right, we're gonna dive into our second question here. Let me get it up so that everybody can see it. Drum roll, please. Just kidding. All right, question two, remember you can follow along on Twitter. Um, we just posted this question. You can reply with the hashtag English Connections in your response. What tools and resources do you use to connect and practice English with native speakers? Um, I know we've seen a lot of these tools already, uh, but maybe Lucine, if you could just remind us what are some, besides Pentel schools, what are some other tools and resources that you're using on a regular basis? So we know you're using pen tools. Can you, can you remind us somewhat of what some of those other tools are that you're using to connect your students? Um, am I going to answer this question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. How do, okay. How do you find the schools that you uh, are sending mail to? Um, as I previously said, I, I use um, such ways of connecting my students globally as uh, uh, sky broadcasting and um, a regular mail and email and talking about uh, the tools that we often use uh, Microsoft tools we use uh, interactive map making by uh, National Geographic and um, uh, we use uh, even uh, streets view to explore the hours our, uh, our uh, partner schools yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so the, 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 how do you find, uh, find the mail to? Uh, sorry, once more, please. How do you find the schools that you send mail to? Ah, uh, okay. How I find the schools? Of course, during our collaboration in the frame of uh, Pample Schools uh, Global Projects and some other international projects. So. At first, we read, we participate in some project, and day by day, our circle of global friends is broadening. So this is how. <laughs> also, I, I um, use some kinds of um, interactive games, educational games, uh, uh, like uh, Kahoot, maybe you, you have heard about it. So I make my own Kahoot games and use uh, Kahoot games created by other educators. It is very interesting uh, way of studying English. So game is, is very, very popular nowadays. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's amazing to see how tools like Kahoot can be used and shared globally. Um, I know in some pen pal schools projects, students will create Kahoots and then share them with other students around the world to play. Um, Mark, I'd love to hear your answer to this question and maybe hear you speak a bit about um, how to facilitate these connections through uh, asynchronous versus live uh, sure. opportunities. Yeah, and I think that um, you know uh, we've already heard a lot of really great examples. Um, Skype is a, a really wonderful tool. Um, you know, I hear a lot of teachers who use social networks to uh, find and connect with like-minded educators. Um, whether teachers are finding uh, a partner on Twitter um, through a Facebook community or group, um, those are those are really great ways to uh, find classrooms that you might want to connect with through Skype. Um, you know, the point that you make, Jessica. Uh, Skype is a tool that, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, uses video uh, to connect with other classrooms or, or audio as well. Um, and so Skype is great for practicing speaking and listening skills, but uh, oftentimes we hear from teachers that Skype can be hard to organize because you need uh, the other classroom to be in school at the same time that you are, more or less. Um, you know, for example, uh, it is uh, 8.30 right now in, in the evening here in Austin, Texas. You might have been able to see the sunset behind me. Um, and I know that school is just getting started in Russia. Um, and so our students wouldn't exactly be able to connect for a video call right now through Skype. Um, so, you know, you used the word asynchronous communication, which means the ability to talk back and forth without being on at the same time. So, you know, email, for example, is a great way to communicate asynchronously. Um, pen pal schools also, uh, the students are com communicating and collaborating by sending text-based messages back and forth. Um, so students can communicate with anybody in any time zone around the world, and they don't have to be worried about being on at the same time. Um, I love to encourage people to also, you know, for uh, the, the middle school and the high school age audiences, for um, teachers who work with students who are maybe the age of 13 through 18 or even older, um, you know, there are uh, comment sections in every newspaper or digital news outlet that you might find. Um, and it's a really great way to uh, uh, learn about a different part of the world by reading the news about from that part of the world. And you can engage with um, native speakers in the comment sections of uh, news stories or in blog posts. Or, um, you know, if you go to a website that does consumer reviews on things like restaurants, and um, that also can be a fun place to uh, collaborate and use writing in an asynchronous way. So um, we've seen teachers get really creative and use a whole variety of tools. Um, you know, pen pal schools, Skype, Kahoot included. Kahoot is a really great tool in that um, students can design quizzes. They can uh, compete against classrooms around the world. Um, and similarly, they don't have to be online at the same time. So um, a really great way to collaborate asynchronously as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, the big that my my kind of takeaway as I'm listening to uh, you both share tonight is that there are so many ways to connect your students. Um, whether you want an asynchronous connection, uh, an immediate connection, you want to spend a lot of time, a little time, whole class, individual student, um, you have a lot of options out there. Um, and I heard uh, I heard one of you, I don't remember who, mentioned social media and using social media to find and connect with educators. So I shared a link in the chat to the Pen Pal Schools Facebook group. Um, so we do have a Facebook group for global educators. It's a great place to connect with people like Lucina. She posts a lot in there. Um, and, and find some classes to learn more about Pen Pal Schools and extend your global connections. Um, and then I don't, I don't think Lucina has mentioned this, but she did mention that she does a lot with National Geographic. Um, if you already use National Geographic as a resource in your classroom, you can become a, a National Geographic certified teacher. And uh, Pen Pal Schools can help you do that. So if you have questions about that, drop them in the chat. Um, but there's a lot of ways that the tools and the things you're already using in your classroom um, can really help you connect globally. So we have one more question here. Let's bring it up on the screen. Oh, let me first get into the window. Uh, 
Uh, what tips or advice do you have for other English teachers who want to connect their students with native speakers? Um, and I'm gonna ask our speakers today to think a little bit about um, teachers who maybe do not connect their students yet at all. Um, what advice or tips would you have besides finding these great resources, um, but to help teachers feel more confident about bringing these opportunities to their students? Um, so Mark, maybe, maybe do we wanna start with you this time? Sure, happy to. Um, yeah, so a couple of tips that I have, I think that, um, you know, be patient is is one of them. I think that, uh, you know, Lucine, possibly you can, you can speak to how many times that you uh, tried uh, uh, before you actually found the, the uh, winning recipe for collaborating. But, uh, you know, be patient with your students, be patient with yourself. Um, you know, if you try one time and it doesn't go exactly as you planned, you know, we got to uh, be models and role models for our students, reflect, learn what we can do better next time and try again. Um, don't expect to uh, uh, knock it out of the park, so to say, the very first time. Um, unless you use pen pal schools, we certainly make it very easy um, for you to have success uh, the very first experience you have. So be patient. Um, I would encourage you to, uh, uh, I, I love that, um, you know, foreign language learning isn't just about vocabulary or grammatical structures anymore. It's about culture as well. Um, and Lucina, you, you mentioned this earlier. Um, I think that you know making it culturally relevant um, is a great way to use global connections. You know, help your students celebrate other cultures. Think about ways in which they're similar and different to their peers. You know, whether you're talking about robotics, whether you are um, talking about climate change, or whether you're talking about short stories, um, look for ways to build this cultural and international mindedness for your learning to respect different peers and and always challenge your students to ask why we're learning this um, and, and and help you know your students think about why it's important to practice these skills and certainly um, you know collaborating with peers their own age um, and, and seeing the uh, uh, benefits of, of global connections might certainly help answer that question so you know, embrace the challenges, you know, celebrate cultures and, and always be asking yourself why and help your students understand why it's important to um, learn English skills, you know, or, or any skills that you're practicing with Global Connections for that matter. That's great advice. I love that idea of asking your students why and asking why yourself, really an opportunity to learn along with them. Um, how about you, Lucina? What advice uh, do you have for teachers who are new to Global Connections? Um, <clears throat> I would like to encourage my colleagues around the world with my own um, my own example because you see I live in a small Siberian city I, I don't live in a capital or a big city but I managed to connect my students thanks to modern technologies to, to connect my students to global community and they are learning new things about the world and, and they use uh, uh, IT um, in English language. Um, and, uh, you know, most of all, uh, what I like about the global collaboration is that my students gain qualities of global citizens. This is very, very important. So, um, also there are some teachers who are ashamed to connect because uh, English is not their native language. I would like to encourage them not to be ashamed to connect and this is the way not only for students but also for teachers to develop their professional skills. Yeah, that's great. That's really awesome. That. Um, we had some other advice shared on Twitter that I want to share with you guys too from educators, um, which one is, I think, similar to what maybe Mark was saying, to let your students make mistakes. Um, you don't need to kind of correct everything they're doing all the time. I know we have a tendency to do that as teachers, um, but let them make mistakes because the, the point is for students to express themselves, right? And if they're learning the language, they're going to make mistakes, um, yes. but but if you correct them too much, then it, it may uh, prevent them from expressing themselves in the future. There is no learning without making mistakes, right? Yeah. <laughs> right so we, we learn by making mistakes. Yep. Fall forward. 
Uh -huh, we fall forward. And then another... And uh, this is the most innovative and the most effective way of teaching English. And I'm sure if my colleagues um, join global projects, they will never come go back again. They will never back uh, to what they have they had previously. So try and you will see all the benefits of global collaboration. And thanks to Penfold Schools for a wonderful project. Yes, thank you. All right, we have just a couple questions from our audience here. That's our audience Q and A portion. Um, our first question is how, and this may be a really hard question for you to answer, Lucine. After everything we've heard from you this evening or this morning, how many countries have your students connected with? Is this question for me? <laughs> So if people are you know, how many students have how many countries have your students connected with? I don't know if it's possible for you to count. <laughs> oh, I can't uh, name this uh, the number of countries because we have a lot of friends uh, around the world. And <laughs> during my presentation, I uh, I uh, demonstrated uh, a few of them. Right now we are we are uh, connecting with Armenia, with uh, Slovenia, with um, it is inside the, the schools around the world project. Uh, with uh, some um, Asian countries, Taiwan, um, Sri Lanka, India. Um, <laughs> also Colombia, if we talk about America, Colombia, USA, and Mexico. This wow. is the wow. yes. This is the circle of our uh, current project. Wow, that's great. That's a lot of countries. And, uh, one it looks like we have one last question here. Um, how much class time do you spend on these global connections? Uh, very good question. Thank you for this. Uh, I would like to remind the teachers that if they want to be globally connected, they have to get out of their comfort zone. <laughs> because there, there, uh, I, I got out of my comfort zone, I, I got out of my curriculum, of my um, responsibilities at school of my duties at school and it isn't it isn't actually paid or I don't know it is because I I can't do another way you see because I find it it um, necessary for teaching English mm -hmm. I I believe that um, the modern teacher uh, can't do other way and the modern teacher should be different from what we had previously, you see. So this is a big challenge because there is so little time for your family, for your friends, for your hobbies. But if you do that, you realize that you can't do other way. Mm. And Jessica, maybe I can share some examples also. Um, you know, we see that you know, English language instruction or, or language instruction specifically, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily one class period. You know, students have the chance to practice language skills in a variety of different contexts. So, you know, and prepare for their global connections in those contexts. So, you know, maybe if you are an English language teacher out there and you see your students once a day, you know, you may have the global connection periods, you know, on Thursdays or Fridays and you may practice some of the um, more traditional teaching methods um, earlier in the week to help your students prepare and build confidence and, and develop knowledge or conduct research that will help them in those global connections. So I think that you know we see teachers all over the world um, do things very differently and they find the amount of time that fits their, uh, their classroom. Sometimes we'll see teachers use pen pal schools, for example, every day of the week um, other teachers might use it during one class period once a week, and that day becomes the global collaboration day. Um, and so, you know, there's a, there's a, there's not one size fits all when it comes to global connections. I think that um, there are a lot of really creative ways to use global connections, make them a center of your instruction without doing it every day, for example. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Lucina. Yeah, I um. 
I'm going to share my screen again here um, and share our community map because I think it really drives home a little bit of what you both have been talking about. Um, you know, on Pen Pal School, students are connecting from 150 different countries around the world. And so there are opportunities to connect every single day. Um, and it can be overwhelming and challenging to make time for these connections in your classroom. But, um, you know, like Lucina said, once you see the impact and you see how beneficial this kind of learning is for students, it's it's hard to go back to a traditional uh, teaching model. So it is worth it. Um, it can, you know, take time, but it doesn't have to because there are so many resources out there that allow you to connect easily. Um, and one of them is, is Pen Pal Schools. So it's been really great to be able to host this webinar tonight and, and help bring you more information, not only about Pen Pal Schools, but a lot of resources and tools that you can use to connect your students globally. Um, I just want to share again a few more of our topics. So if you want to connect with some of these countries, to go back to the map, we have a, a, a lot of students, over 340,000 pen pals that are learning on pen pal schools, and they're exploring topics together. And this is only a small group of the topics that are available for you on pen pal schools. Lucina mentioned that her students are exploring schools around the world right now, which you can see here in the bottom right corner. Um, but there are things on here that fit into every classroom in your school for every grade, um, a world of poetry. We have students designing and building robots together, discussing food and immigration, which is a really popular topic right now. Um, there's a lot here for you on Pen Pal School. So if you are new to Global Connections and you don't know where to start, I encourage that you start here with us. Um, and we're going to make it very, very easy for you uh, with a special discount just for you, just for attending this webinar this morning. Um, so visit penpalschools.com slash English. Uh, I believe I also shared a link in the chat. Um, and then if you just go to penpalschools.com, that is where you will be able to learn all about Pen Pal Schools and how easy it is to start connecting your students. Um, and hopefully you'll have an opportunity to connect with uh, Lucene and her class and, and learn a little bit more and get your students connected. Um, I also shared a link to our Facebook group in the chat. I highly encourage you to join our Facebook group. It's another great way to connect with our global ambassadors uh, and learn more and start to build your network of global educators. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight, um, for viewing this webinar at a later time. If you took the time to do that, we really appreciate it. And thank you again to our speakers, Mark and Lucina and Faith, who was not here with us, but still contributed some ideas. Um, it's such a joy to learn from you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And, and thank you, Jessica. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good morning. Thank you.